Hi YouTube, this is a free extract from my larger Illustrator Advanced course. You can check that out on bringyourownlaptop.com. Also, there's a link in the description for the exercise files. Those are free to download, so go and download those. All right, uh, yeah, enjoy the video. Hey there, in this video, we're gonna look at something called a gradient mesh. And what that allows us to do is do gradients that don't kind of follow the straight line like a linear gradient or a round radial gradient. We're gonna do things like this where it kind of whips around and there's different consistencies and things going on. Even this kind of like weird blurry thing at the top here. Plus we're gonna add this film grain. It has nothing to do with anything other than I try to make it look a little nicer by adding film grain. All right, let's go and do that now in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, first up, uh, open up gradientmesh.ai from the exercise files. And we're gonna look at the easy ways and the hard ways. So I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle out here. Doing it with simple shapes like this, ellipses and rectangles, super easy. Gradient mesh is awesome. What we're gonna do is, there's two ways of adding a mesh, okay? Um, you can go to object and go down to create gradient mesh. Decide how many rows and columns. I guess the the more rows and columns you have, the, the greater control you have, but the harder it is to make it look, um, I guess, smooth. Okay, so more detail, but less smooth. So yeah, let's go with that. And we've got our gradient mesh. And um, the other way to do it is, I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool, draw something relatively similar. And uh, there's a way of doing it using the tool over here. There's a specific gradient mesh tool. And this way you can just kind of click in specific parts. It's up to you what you want to do. Cool. Once you've got your gradient mesh though, the technique is the same. You want to work with your white arrow. And let's say we're going to select all of these guys around the outside. So I'm selecting these guys. I'm going to hold shift and grab the ones at the bottom as well. So I've just got all these top anchor points selected and the bottom ones. I'm going to open up my uh, properties and I'm going to go to fill and I'm going to go to my swatches. And if you're using my file, I've got some pre-made ones for us. And I'm going to click on you guys. And you can see what it does. It kind of, uh, yeah adds our gradients. Now, nothing very exciting yet has happened, right? Because you're like, I could have done that with just a regular gradient. I'm gonna grab all these guys in the middle here and make them uh, green, okay? And still, you could have done this. Where it gets different is if I click on one of these guys, uh, maybe that one and that one, and I'm gonna go into here and say, I want you to be pink. This is where it gets a bit different, right? Is you can actually map out gradients or in my case, make them look terrible. Um, let's have a look at what else you can do. You can move these guys. See this guy here? I can move and bend him down this corner. You can see it does some really kind of interesting airbrush style effects, okay? Um, you can move them around. All these guys have handles, you can see. I can adjust this guy. He doesn't have a color. Let's give him a color. Uh, I'm gonna give him black, okay? And you can start kind of bending these things around and yeah, start distorting. Now that's not a very good example because I'm just randomly doing a shape, but it gives you kind of a, I guess a look at how easy it is when the shape is simple. Let's look at uh, doing something with our whale. Okay, now the same thing, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate. You're gonna go up there, as exciting as you are. Shift uh, O, uh, brings up my artboard tool, holding down the Alt key on a PC, Option key on a Mac. I'm gonna have another option here. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in. Now, if I select the body of this whale and try and do a gradient mesh, it's painful. Okay, it just happens when it, it really complex shapes like this. Now, um, I say that just because, like, it's just honest. I try and use the gradient tool, and you're like, I'm gonna click there. Cool, and it's kind of followed it, right? It's kind of put in this line, it went around the eye, which is not really what I wanted, but it's okay. Um, and it's kind of done some stuff around here. So, it's, and up here, it's gone really weird. Okay, and it's just, yeah, just what happens with a complex shape. I can say I want a couple of extra points follow along here, because this is kind of what I want to do, right? I want to make a kind of gradient that follows this line. The problem with it though is, yeah, all the kind of complexity. I'm going to hold shift and grab you, because every time you do one and they cross over, it creates another joining path and it gets a little confusing about where you are actually going. I'm holding shift with my direct selection tool, clicking all of these, and now I'm gonna to go to, say, that color there. And it's kinda of working. Um, the more you add, the harder it becomes. So what I tend to do, you can you can mess around with that, it's fine, um, use the gradient tool. So what I tend to do is I'm gonna duplicate this first artboard, um, so shift O on my keyboard holding down the Alt key on a PC, Option key on a Mac to make a duplicate. Okay, and what I wanna do is, instead of trying to turn this into a mesh, I'm just gonna use a simple shape. I'm gonna use ellipse just because it has like sort of 
I guess it's quite an elliptical shape. Use that or a rectangle, something super simple that matches what you're doing. Make sure it covers the whole thing. And actually what I'll do is I'll delete that is I want it on its own layer because I want to use this guy on top. Okay, so this is going to be my whale. I'm gonna have another layer that I want just underneath it. Okay, and you are going to be my gradient. And a little trick is, um, uh, let's actually grab my ellipse tool on the gradient layer. I'm gonna draw that big guy. Cool. So he's just underneath. Now, what I'd like to do is be able to see through this whale. Now, I could go to my outline mode, okay, which is Command Y on a Mac or Control Y on a PC. But actually, what I want to do is, is there's a little trick with the whale. I'm going to lock him so he doesn't move. But also, if I hold Command and click him, okay, he just turns into outlines. You can turn it off by Command clicking it as well. So I'm working on the gradient layer, and I can kind of see the outlines at least. Now, why do I do this? It's because when I start using the gradient tool, let's grab him here. When I say gradient tool, I mean gradient mesh tool, is when I start kind of clicking in say here, it's more consistent lines appear, okay? So let's say I've got this one and I can grab my direct selection tool and I can start bending this uh, around to kind of fit the forms and the shapes of what I need. And what I might do is bend him around. My ellipses may be a bit big for what I need, but you're getting the idea, right? Um, Cool. And if you need more points, okay, I'm going to slowly but surely, remember the least amount of points becomes a lot easier. I'm going to follow that line along, add another one, Y arrow, and I'm going to start bending this around. Okay. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm kind of just following some curves. I'm going to hope, I'm going to cross my fingers as this thing's going to look half decent when I'm finished. Um, I'm going to add another one there. Okay, Y arrow, which is the A key. And this guy here had to be made, okay, to kind of make this thing consistent. But what you can do is you can grab him and drag him up from there. Make sure these guys don't overlap. I could spin ages. I should spin ages to make it look really cool. I'm kind of happy with what we're doing. This guy here, what's he doing? He needs to go somewhere. You can drag him off, okay, so he doesn't kind of influence as much. But he's going to be up here. You are going to come up. These anchor points are going to come out here. You're like, get on with it, Dan. Okay, I'm getting on with it, I promise. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on maybe this guy. And maybe holding shift, grab this guy as well. And this guy, so I've got three of them selected. I'm going to go to my properties panel. I'm going to go to my fill. And I'm going to use kind of some of that gradient. Okay. Um, and yeah, that's the way to kind of do a gradient mesh. Yes, I could have just done that with a ready, just a, maybe a linear gradient. Let's let's go further, okay? And you couldn't have done that with a radial or linear. Maybe you could. So when it gets down to things like this, um, let's go. Let's force him in here. When it starts doing some cool kind of pushing around of these things. So it's that kind of really kind of tricky gradient and um, that you can see it's kind of really sharp over here. It starts getting quite furry over here just because the distances between these anchor points are quite, um, quite big. So go through, well, what do we do now is you spend a, a bit longer doing it than I did. Oh man, okay, it's bad. So I'm gonna grab this guy and we're gonna go to our layers panel. I'm gonna hold the command key to turn that back on. And what we wanna do is they need to be on the same layer now because we wanna turn them into a clipping mask. Um, do they need to be on the same layer? That's a good point. So as long as the whale's in front, I'm pretty sure I might be able to shift click this guy and hit Command 7. Ooh, it did work. Okay, so Command 7 is the shortcut for clipping mask. If you're um, at one of the long way, uh, there's make clipping mask. It's not very long, there's a button. Or if you're in an older version of Illustrator object, clipping mask make. Okay, either way, that's what I'm trying to do, right? It's easier to do uh, this gradient mesh inside a simple circle than it is to try and do on top of the actual shape. How good is this? This is pretty bad. Um, my color seems like a good idea. Um, you get caught out live, live and direct. You guys watching me. Now, one more thing we might do before we go is often people want to do a kind of a gradient mesh that looks like kind of like, they want to do, they think they need a gradient mesh when they don't. Okay, let me show you another way that I often do things. Okay, so I'm going to grab my pen tool um, and draw, uh, I'm going to turn the um, smart guides off, command U, um, because what I want to do is I want to create kind of a shape up here. 
kind of does this kind of thing. I got it in my head. Let's make it a reality. So, so you want to kind of like a jelly button kind of thing. So instead of trying to do that with a gradient map, um, it's easier often just to give it the right color. So I'm going to click down here and I'm going to say, I want you to be white. Um, yeah, white will do. And then just use a blur. Okay, so I'm going to go effect. I'm going to go down to blur and use Gaussian blur. Total cheap trick to improve you on. And you can kind of see what it's going to do. It's the same kind of thing that we maybe would have been able to do down there. Okay, but getting the blur right. I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit. I wanted this kind of, yeah, that kind of effect. I'm going to do one last little shape. Um, what I'll do is I'll duplicate him. And you, my friend, I'm going to trim off with a circle to get a kind of a bit of a layer thing going. My ship to outline mode just so I can grab you. Select both of them. And I'm going to go out of outline mode because that's kind of confusing. I'm going to use my shape builder tool. Okay, uh, shift M. And I'm going to delete these gits. So I just wanted this kind of chunk. And what I might do is turn down the blur of this. So where you've got something that's got an effect applied, you need to go to the either the appearance panel, which is under window, or in my case, I can see it here. And I'm going to turn this way down. Appearance. Now I've got this kind of like jewel effect here where um, the top part is kind of, there are different blur levels. You get what I mean? I oh, man, I was hoping that was going to look better. But hopefully you understand it in technique. Gradient meshes can be tricky. Sometimes it is easier just to make things like that, okay, and just blur them out. One last thing before we go is often gradients, uh, especially gradient meshes and stuff in Illustrator, it has a really kind of like vector look that I, maybe isn't pop as popular at the moment. A uh, cool little trick is you can select all of this stuff and add a cool effect in here under effect. Call, I'm trying to redeem myself <laughs> to make it look somewhat better. Effect uh, and go to artistic and it's not under artistic. It's under texture, go to grain. And uh, I had kind of one part of it selected. What did a part did I have it? Did I have it all selected? It's actually just picked whatever the top piece was and you can kind of see what it's doing, right? I zoomed in a little bit. It's adding this kind of like film grain texture stuff to it. You can decide on, you know, the intensity and texture. And um, it does something weird with the edges though, and I'll show you how to get around that. But it only picked one piece, even though it has done it to all of them. Can you see? And I find, um, forget the edges, but it kind of adds a nicer effect to these guys. So to get around the pixel -less pixelation of the edges, I'm going to undo that and it's easier to do this. Um, grab a rectangle tool, draw this over the top and you apply it to this basically and do a layer mode. So I do you, I'm going to apply the exact same one, apply grain. This is, uh, this won't be here for you if you haven't done it before. This is like repeat the thing I just did. So apply it to this and then under here under opacity, switch this to multiply. It does the same kind of effect. It's something to the background as well, which maybe not what you want, but it definitely fixes up uh, these edges. And what I might do is adjust it a bit more under my appearance panel here, click on grain and uh, contrast. I'm gonna go up maybe, intensity. Let's go up, click okay. Is it better? Have I redeemed myself? Probably not. But you, my creative friend, are gonna make it look heaps better than me. You've got the techniques. All right, that is going to be it. I will see you in the very next video where I will do something that looks nicer, I promise.